This week, I traveled across the world to play a gig in a giant mirrored rectangle in the Saudi Arabian desert. I also connected with ancient civilizations, faced my fear of flying, and experienced the front lines of cultural evolution in a place where concerts were illegal for decades. It was not a boring week, let me tell you that. All right, so I'm on my way back from my last rehearsal before we start this Middle East run. I don't really know what to expect. I don't know a whole lot about that part of the world, and certainly what I do know, or what I do have the impression of, just from US media and culture, makes me somewhat apprehensive, especially as a Jew, and especially right now. There's a lot of political instability happening over there, and obviously there's a lot of sentiments towards Jews and Israel, and, but uh, I'm going over there, because it's my job, because I have a gig and I'll just try to stay safe, and I hope it's interesting. So after around 20 hours of travel, we arrived in Saudi Arabia to three days off. Luckily, we were staying just a few miles from the historic town of Alula, which we wasted no time in exploring. So they call Alula the old city. And as an American, I have a certain impression of what it means for something to be old. My hometown has museums and plaques commemorating historic sites from Revolutionary War times in the 1700s. In Alula, they have rock formations with carvings written in Aramaic, the original language of the Bible. Being around things that are so ancient has a certain gravity about it. In America, you don't really feel like the world is any older than a few hundred years old. It's more of just an abstract fact, but here you feel it, and it makes you more aware of your place in the whole lineage of human history. But we only had so much time to get into the touristy stuff. Before long, it was time to get to work. The gig was in the Mariah Concert Hall, one of the more unique venues I've ever played. This is a giant mirrored cube in the middle of the desert. What? I cannot believe this is a Live Nation venue. It makes sense. They're a giant corporation that would, that would have something like God this. damn it. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> that just made it so much less cool. Getting their fucking paws into everything. Into everything. You guys are gonna die. Black. It's so sick. Ah. The stage is the like I've never this you, we will never top this ever in our lives. That's fine. I'm fine with that. I'm really okay with that. So, as far as I know, the idea behind this big mirrored rectangle is that they wanted to create something that blended in with the natural environment, drawing attention to the beauty around us rather than detracting from it which I think is an incredible sentiment. There's an acknowledgement that it's surrounded by all this natural beauty and a desire to not impose on the natural beauty. It actually, it, it, it actually does an interestingly good job of blending in with the environment. Like, if you look at it and you just look quick, you actually don't even see that the building's there because you just see what's behind you reflected. So like, even as I'm like looking in the camera right now, I don't see a building behind me. It just looks like a blank landscape. Probably one of my favorite things about playing here is that it's not one of these 20,000 capacity arenas. It's actually just a 500 capacity hall. And you might say like, isn't it cooler to play bigger venues? But it's actually not cooler to play bigger venues. We, we just did this two month tour where we were doing mostly arenas. And I don't know why anybody holds concerts in those things. Those are meant for sports, but those are terrible for concerts. And in an arena, everything just sounds like mush, but a 500 capacity venue is like the perfect size for, for good sound. So I'm looking forward to actually having good sound for once. <laughs> Saudi Arabia. Maybe I'll be back someday. 
now the breakdown. And just when it felt like my body had finally adjusted to the new time zone, it was time to go home. Back on the bus. But not before taking the last morning to catch the desert sunrise in a hot air balloon. Am I really about to do this? This feels not okay. This feels very not okay. So before I came here, I was pretty afraid to come here. I was afraid to have my camera out. I heard that men weren't allowed to talk to women, that I'd be arrested for singing in public. And so for the first few days, we walked on eggshells, afraid that one wrong move would land us in Saudi prison or something like that. But in reality, things feel way more chill than that. And I'm not saying that Saudi Arabia does not have a repressive government, obviously, since I'm whispering it, but coming here was a refreshing reminder that the people are not the government. The people are fun and hospitable and generous. Strangers gave us rides places, invited us to hang out, and treated us really well. Being here isn't just significant for us. It's also significant kind of for Saudi Arabia as well. Because just a few years ago, there were no concerts here at all. Like literally none, because it was literally illegal for decades. And you just gotta think of all the Mozarts and Zappas who lived and died without being able to express their art at all. But then on the other hand, there's something beautiful about music only happening in small gatherings and homes. It's almost like it's more culturally authentic and artistically pure in that context. Here in the West, so much artistic expression is driven by the desire for fame and money and clicks and likes and exposure, and that's kind of sad. I'm definitely not saying that repressive, conservative theocracy is a good thing for art. It's obviously not, but I'm just saying that it's complicated. It's really interesting to be here visiting in the infancy of this country's liberalization. It's extremely beautiful, and I really hope that I get to come back someday.